My job as, as, as a soybean breeder is to, is to create and evaluate new soybean varieties. For every one variety that a grower sees in a, in a, in a bag of seeds, I've looked at over 5,000 for every one of those varieties that makes this market. Over a period of a number of years, we will go through and, and all the uh, agronomic traits that might be important to the grower and uh, just try to find something that's going to do well and is adapted to, to the environment. A lot of what we're looking for is just uh, varieties that, that look good out in the field. Does it stand up well? Uh, does it have a lot of beans on it? Is it uniform? You know, all the things that we really kind of, you know, you, you need to, to produce a good variety. So there's a lot to it, but really it can all be boiled down to if it, it doesn't yield well, it's not gonna sell. <laughs> Always, I mean, yield, yield, yield. Uh, but, but after that, there's a lot of things. If you go a little bit farther north, iron deficiency chlorosis tolerance it becomes quite an issue, and, and even a bit even farther south in Kansas. Soybean cyst nematode is probably the, the biggest pest to soybeans in the country, and we, we're, we have a significant effort in, in breeding transversions for that. We were also looking at soybean white mold. We have excellent screening uh, environment to, to, to look for, for resistance there and, and to, to look at our, our potential varieties to see you know, what, how exactly they do. Um, we also have considerable breeding efforts for breeding for Phytophthora and, and, uh, and trying to increase the uh, frequency of resistance in our, in our germplasm for, for, for that trait as well. In most cases, under your standard cases, you're probably looking at about, you know, uh, eight years from, from this stage and up until when something, you know, arrives in a grower's field. There's a lot that goes on during that time. Uh, you know, the, you know the, the seed will, as soon as it's harvested, be shipped down to Puerto Rico and grown for a few generations just to kind of get things, you know, a, few, a little bit more homozygous, a little more, more true from seed, a lot less noise going on in some of those populations. Once we hit that stage, we'll, we'll take single plant selections, grow those out as a six-foot row. Uh, there we can toss out a lot of you know the trash that we have you know things that just don't look good don't look right that just aren't ever going to make it you know anything that makes it past that stage we'll take about 10 percent the best 10 percent that'll go into a yield trial you know we'll plant that at all of our locations then we'll take again the top 10 percent of that and that'll go into our second year yield trials our advanced trials um, that'll get planted at all of our locations but we'll plant it you know two replications at every location and then from there again we'll, we'll take the best top for 10 percent and that'll go into a, what's called an elite trial. Once it hits the elite stage, and any breeding program within the company growing that maturity group will grow, uh, you know, all of those varieties. So, we, you know, we we have uh, our, the majority of our efforts here are maturity groups twos and threes. Um, we have three breeding programs that deal in those maturities. So, all three programs will grow, be growing, you know, each other's elite lists, so that we can get a better idea of, you know, the variety performance and how it does at different markets in different areas. Once it does reach that elite trial, we'll maybe take about. 20% of, of the best 20% right there. That is what, what, what will then go to foundation seed and ha, you know uh, eventually be a, a variety in a, in, in a grower's field. So uh, if you go follow all that math, it should be about for every 5,000, you'll, you'll get about one if you're lucky. So uh, that's the process.